Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, HPP application and emerging HPP applications in Asia. This is Oscar Garcia from marketing department at Hyperbaric. Here uh, today with us, uh, we have three great speakers it's, uh, uh, representing three different brands using HPP. First of all, we have Talay Butel. from Talay Lens, which is in Singapore. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Oscar. Hi, Talay. Great to have you here. Glad to be here. Great to have you here. Second one, Kakui, CEO and president of Kakui Foods from Japan. Hello, Miho. Hello. And we also have Natalie Miho. And we also have Natalie Lowe. Hello. From the Bestiary Pet Care, which is the official distributor of Estes Real Food and HPP Raw Pet Food brand in, yeah, in the US, but also yeah, present in, in Singapore and other Asian countries. Great to have you all here. Yeah. So I think it's good that we can start with, with you, Tale, with your presentation. I will put your presentation right on the screen. Sure. One second. Thank you. All right. Hi, Jan. I'm Talay from Talay Baby okay, Blends. Okay, there you go. All yours. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so once again, hi, I'm Talay from Talay Baby Blends. As Oscar mentioned, we are a Singapore-based company. So as you can see as our main tagline, with baby blends for your precious ones inspired by Mother Nature. This whole thing started actually with my mother, Carol, when they were living in the Fiji Islands back 30 plus years ago and realized what was coming in on the shipments or on the shelf was really old or stale or just didn't taste good and realized also it wasn't nutritious. So if you've ever tasted off the shelf baby food, I think you, you probably understand what I'm saying. So what she did, she would go to the local market and prepared my meals daily and whatever she was also pretend, uh, preparing for my father and herself, she would kind of blend up and feed me. 30 years down the, the road, I was living in Paris, going to Cordon Bleu uh, Culinary School and realized that the the story of baby food hadn't changed, that my friends were having the same issue, those who had children, you know, other people I had talked to, and that demand for fresh, high quality, nutritious food, again, was not met. And I remembered my mom kind of always talking about the struggle she had as well with my younger brother a couple of years later. So I called her up and said, hey, how about we join forces and start this baby food company in Singapore? So I moved to Singapore and that's how this whole mother-daughter duo started. And the reason it's called Talay is because my name means precious one in Fijian and we know how precious your children are. So I figured it was a nice little fit. And that's a picture of me in traditional Japanese dress, uh, sorry, Fijian dress that inspired the design of our logo. So as I mentioned, we are a baby food brand based here in Singapore, and we pride ourselves in having the goodness of nature in our products. It's fresh. We use a majority of local produce as well as within the region. We want to make sure that we're all natural and we're convenient for parents who, though, for those who are busy, working hard, don't have time, you know, can't think of, you know, it's been a long day coming home from work, can't think of it. Here you go. That's where we come in in terms of the convenient. We want to also give you the chance to have the family time together as well. So you're not spending your time in the kitchen. The recipes were designed to enhance your child's development through nutrition, taste and texture. So we work with uh, pediatricians and dietitians as well to come up with the right um, combination of recipes. So I'll my recipes, so I create the recipes and then I work to make sure that they're correct. Um, that there's the different characteristics of here are your, you know, your top main ingredients. So the child gets used to those flavors, followed by the carrying ingredients, which are your spices, your herbs and all that stuff. So 
the development of the palate is there. But in order to retain that freshness, we were really happy and really lucky to know that uh, Hyperbaric was in Singapore. And through that, we wanted to make sure we had uncompromised food safety through the state of the art technology of HPP. So really happy that we could do the cold pasteurization. As I mentioned, our guarantee is to make sure that everything is responsibly sourced and we want to make sure we're always fresh, we're whole ingredients. We also pride on ourselves that we're gluten free, dairy free, there's no added salt, no added sugar. Again, everything is natural. It's all its natural sodium and all its natural sugar. Um, after we, as you can see um, the process with HPP is after we create our blends, we pack them and seal them and they go straight to the HPP uh, warehouse where they're processed. And with that HPP, it removes any of the impurities during uh, the duration of that product shelf life. And contrary to heat pasteurization, which again, we pride ourselves on of having that differ differentiation, is that we're able to maintain the nutrition that the child needs for their development. So that was another big thing we really wanted to make sure. So they get the taste, nutrition, and the textures as well. So our education with HPP, because it's new within the region, we wanted to make sure that people understood that. We have engaged with mothers and talked talk to them through the process, but we've also created a fun little animation explaining it, what HPP is, because a lot of people you know, relate to visuals and we figured we kind of tie in the brand and HPP together. So here's a little snippet of a better explanation of what HPP is and Tile. Welcome to the world of Tile, where we bring the goodness of nature to your precious ones. Always ensuring freshness for your baby's plate is challenging. So we sought far and near and found technology to guarantee that each Tile pouch is as fresh as what's falling from the trees. This technology is called High Pressure Processing, or HPP. HPP is a cold pasteurization technique that preserves food through high pressure without additives or heat. This cold high pressure neutralizes harmful stuff like bacteria and viruses found in food. Here's why cold pasteurization is best. Most processed foods manufacturers use heat to kill bacteria, which degrades the nutritional value, flavor, and natural color of the food. Many important vitamins such as vitamin C, B1, B2, B6, and folic acids are heat sensitive and can be significantly lost in the process. At Tile, we use HPP so your baby's food can effectively retain up to 95% of its original nutrition and freshness while ensuring its natural flavor and taste. HPP is achieved here in three simple steps. First, your Tile pouches are placed into a high pressure vessel. Then it moves into a machine and is filled with water. Finally, pumps increase the pressure, which is applied immediately and evenly. That's it. Your Tile pouches now have a much longer shelf life with maximum food safety and the same yummy taste your precious ones love. I invite you to try to lay today. Baby blends for your precious ones, inspired by Mother Nature. So I hope you all enjoyed that little snippet. <laughs> it was fun doing the animation and doing the voiceover. So as I mentioned, um, when we've been creating the blends, we wanted to make sure we have the right ingredients and the right setup. So working with the pediatricians, we decided to keep it plant-based. So we have three categories of how our blends are, are made. We've got vegetable blends, vegetable and fruit, and fruit blends. And each recipe is formulated with key benefits in mind, such as antioxidants, bone health, heart health, brain development, muscle development, digestion, immunity, and vision. Because we know as a child grows, there's different stages, and each of those key benefits are extremely important for that growth. And again, through HPP, we know that those nutrients are retained and it helps those key benefits play the role with that child development, as well as keeping the taste, which is extremely important to expand the palates of the children, which means they become less picky eaters because they're actually tasting the proper 
ingredients themselves and developing those flavors. And they just bounce around their tongue, which is really cute when you see them experiencing those tastes for the first times. We have a setup where you can purchase online for now and parents can mix and match the blends when ordering online. They can choose their child's favorite and then order a subscription service if they want to. So they know they can guarantee that every week or their de de delivery frequency of choice, um, they will be getting the blends that their child likes straight to their door. Here is just a snippet of some of our Tilly babies. They range in all different ages. We have six months old, because that's when we come in when babies start solids, to even three-year-olds as well, to adults that have even taken some on the go as a pre-workout snack or after-workout snack, things like that. So this is just a few pictures of our Tilly babies, and I think they're just adorable. <laughs> as I said, this is a mother and daughter duo. So there's me um, on the left, followed by my mother. And we also have Charlene, who is our operations manager. We all have different um, experience backgrounds, but we work really well as a team. And each of our education and skills really help amplify the team and move forward and really create a fun environment and just yeah, a startup life. It's been really, really fun. As I mentioned, we also have our pediatrician, who is Dr. Natalie, locally um, here in Singapore, as well as Vanessa, who is our dietitian and nutritionist. She is also located here in Singapore, as well as Pamela, who is a postpartum doula, also located in Singapore. So with all three of them, we've been working uh, in creating blog posts for parents on our website to help just educate with tips and tricks and also working on the formulation of the recipes and making sure, again, those key benefits are ingrained within the recipe for the children. And that's kind of who we are. And that's our information if you want to get in contact with us. We're really excited. Have we launched in August? And yeah, so far it's been going really well. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Tale. Great presentation. Thank you, and Great products and, and a story in HP. I have now a couple of questions. Yeah. Sure. I have now a couple of being how are you educating customers uh, and people in Singapore about the HPV? Well, you have shown us a great illustration, uh, yeah, so a great video and illustration, explaining the process. So I know what else about this. Yeah, great question. As you mentioned that we had that animation to kind of help people understand because again, like they respond visually, but we really sit down with the mothers and walk through with them the difference between the heat pasteurization and the cold pasteurization and really talk about the technology of HPP. And once they fully understand that, it's a really great kind of like aha moment for them. So we constantly talk about it. That's how we kind of lead about our product is, you know, have you hold, heard of cold pasteurization? No, because a lot of people think cold pressed and there's a difference between the two. So, you know, we take the time to make sure that we explain everything and, you know, kind of move forward with that. So it's been a learning curve for us, but definitely a learning curve for everyone. And again, once they understand it, it's kind of cool. Great. I'm sold. <laughs> We will write the same because there are a lot of confusion uh, around it and different concepts, but we'll try keeping keeping on. And let's go now with the second question. Yeah, what, has, what been has been the response of customers towards the product? They have been loving it. We're really lucky because it really shows that the product speaks for itself. There are people, we had a fair this past weekend that we were part of, and you know, you're you're interacting with people, mothers, you know, adults, all you know, all ages kind of thing. Even other young kids have come up and be like, because they point to and they see fruits and vegetables and like, what is that? I want to try it. We had, I believe the child, he was probably around 10, and he called he said this is the best smoothie he's ever had. And it was just, it warmed our hearts because we just see how people can actually taste the ingredients. He's like, wow, I can actually taste the banana in here. And you know, even those kind of like, no, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna try baby food. And it's like, don't knock it until you try it. And we had a gentleman, like I mentioned, take for his workouts. And 
it's been a really, really great response. And also just seeing kids where parents were like, oh, I don't know. I don't really eat, you know, broccoli. I don't think my child's going to like broccoli. And it's like, well, here you go. Just try it. And the kid loves it. And so then the parents are really happy that, okay, they're getting the veggies they need and things like that. So the response has been really great. And we can only hope that it gets better and that we can continue to just build that community. And yeah, so fingers crossed. <laughs> No, it should be great that really satisfying, I guess, to create something that you see that the kids are loving. They're loving it. So that's all a good the sign. flavor and, and it's really satisfying. Yeah. So great story again. Uh, thank you so much, Sally. And now it's time for, for the second speaker. For this, uh, we have with us uh, Miho Kakui. Hello. Hi, Miho. Hi. Hello. So, well, Miho will explain hi, the experience with HPV as well with their own machine and developing, developing sorry, different products. So I will put your presentation on the screen right now. Yeah. And there you go, Miho. Of course, you're going to start. Okay. Thank you for introducing me. Hello. Hello again. I'm Miho Kakui, the Managing Director of Kakui Food Limited in Japan. Today, I'd like to show you some of our HPP activities in Japan. Since 2017, we have been researching the possibility of extending the shelf life of our mainstream product, Bento, by using HPP. By 2021, we've successfully obtained a patent in Japan. First of all, allow me to give a quick overview of our company. We are a family land business producing packed lunch products, sandwiches, and ready meals to various supermarkets and convenience stores in Japan. We have acquired one of the hyperbolic 55, which just over 10 have been imported into Japan. Unlike other companies who make their HPP facilities confidential, we make ours publicly throughout the industry for those seeking the use of the technology. Moreover, we are the one and only company in Japan to provide touring services in this field of business. With use of HPP, our various packed branches and salada products have their shelf life extended. Furthermore, we also use HPP to produce vegetable juice products. Now I will explain the differences between the bento and non-Japanese ready meals. In Europe and the United States, there are ready meals instead such as fish in cream sauce, without etc. in a single dish format. Longer shelf life can be expected at 4 Celsius. Nevertheless, it will be difficult for a single person to try out different dishes. It may be too much for a meal for one person. The bento consisted of various ingredients in a box, such as rice, deep fried dish, grilled dish, pickles, condiment, condiments, etc. It's a meal for a single person. Thus, basically it's not shared with another person and may be, hy may be hygienic in recent COVID-19 situations. The bento products are maintained in the range of 20 to 25 Celsius during distribution and retailing in order to preserve optimum texture of the rice. For this reason, the Japanese bentos have a very short shelf life, typically 48 hours and 20 Celsius. Due to having to maintain this specific temperature range, the Japanese bento goes off relatively quickly. Hence, daily production is a must and therefore the production facilities need to be in operation around the clock. Furthermore, the amount of food waste at both production facilities and retailers are quite significant. For instance, in Japan, 450 tons of food are disposed at of at convenience stores on a daily basis. Therefore, we came to the conclusion that if we could extend the shelf life by using HPP, 
we could reduce the amount of food waste during production and could also take time off once a week, which makes it very sustainable. In order to plan and optimize our production techniques, the research on HPP applied on cooked food products is a vital step forward. However, the protein characteristics have already been altered at that point. Thus, there were no precedents available in this area of research. Moreover, each food ingredients have its own optimum pressure to be applied. In other words, if the same high pressure is applied on a product consisting of different type of dishes, it fails the sensory evaluation, i.e. becomes tasteless and horrible. Here, I'd like to show the experiment process of HPP applied on vacuum packed vendor. The hyperbolic 55 we have is capable of processing at a maximum of 600 megapascal. We have applied HPP using this on bento consisting of varieties of food as shown in the photos, such as rice, meat, omelette, pasta, etc., under a number of conditions and carried out tests for shelf life together with sensory evaluation as commercial products. Next is these graphs. Tests were conducted by applying HPP on pre-packed benders and observed for 4 to 14 days at 20 Celsius. 5 to 10 minutes of buried high pressures were applied on steamed rice, omelette, and chicken teriyaki. Those with pH adjustment additives did extend the shelf life, but not significantly with HPP. No food lasted a week without HPP. However, when 550 megapascal was applied, shelf life was extended to 12 days. Next, we conducted our in-house sensory evaluation. Tastes were categorized from A to C. A is the benchmark equivalent to applying HPP. B is room for improvement, and C is very tasteless. Unlike the bacterial test, higher the pressure does not necessarily yield better results. There are optimum pressure for each item. For instance, chicken teriyaki became tasteless at over 400 megapascal. Steamed rice was tasteless in all tests. To make the HPP, to market, sorry, to market the HPP applied vendors, we have put together the results from bacterial tests and sensory evaluation to these graphs. It shows the minimum pressure required and amount of optimum pressure to preserve tastiness. Furthermore, to enhance the taste, food were poorly treated with sugar, tolehalose, and seasonings, and so on. This became our HPP on bento processing architecture. Now on to introduction of our new HPP products, the meal side range. In the United States and Europe, cold pressed juice products are widely sold. However, for us in Japan, we considered that the nutrient absorption was too quick. Moreover, many in Japan would not understand the difference between the juice concentrates. In 2016, when I had my pancreatic surgery, I thought about the importance of diet that affects people's health. This led me to come up with the notion of something that could be taken casually, yet not a typical supplement, but which in dietary fiber that delivers healthy outcome. That plenty of vegetables could be taken before or after every meal. So the answer was meal made with whole vegetables along with minimum chemical changes, thanks to HPP. Miosar is a juicy and purest brown with all ingredients sourced in Japan, with our ethos, to invigorate both mind and body with power of vegetables. Similar, but two different types. Why? Since the Japanese legislation does not allow sterilization treatment of juice products by HPP alone, we combine pasteurization to overcome. On the other hand, vegetable puree are not pasteurized. When containing certain amount of solids, 
they are not clustered juice products, therefore, pasteurization is not required. Farmers are carefully selected from all over Japan. Miyosai mainly uses vegetables that fall short of size and shape requirements for the retail market. Two of our Miyosai range here. Firstly, here is Miyosai's purple carrot juice. Purple carrots are grown at Halaya Farm in Hokkaido, where altitude of 500 meters above sea. The purple carrots grown here contain 200% more superoxide dismutase than commercially grown orange carrots. These become the purple carrots with high antioxidant. Kyoho grape juice is then blended in, which concludes our flagship vegetable juice with SOD and polyphenol. Next is Miyosai Berry Springs Vegetable Pure, Iro Iro Green. This revolutionary vegetable puree can only be made possible using uncooked fresh vegetables. A unique blend of celery and mitsubo tolefoil is added to komatsunes, cucumbers, and pumpkins. A single pouch provides the equivalent of 100 grams of freshly picked vegetables. The Iroiro Green was born with a view of making fresh green salads as easy to enjoy as drinking them. The beautiful green color is preserved thanks to HPP, which do away with pasteurization. So, the pure flavor, aroma, nutritional values, and texture of the original fresh vegetables are locked in as they are to be savored. The HPP technologies are not quite well known in Japan. Nonetheless, we aim to offer products that benefit the society using HPP. This concludes the, the introduction to our HPP activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sofmiho. Good presentation again. And so in the benefits of, of HPP and especially its versatility to develop different products. So for uses from ready to eat meals as is bento. So yeah. it's been great. And I will show you a couple of questions as well. So you yeah. already mentioned it a little bit, but here's the first one. Did you encounter any difficulties in terms of re regulations for the commercialization of such disruptive products in Japan? Yes, the Japanese food government, like the FDA in the United States, and local governments are not interested in new technologies and try to avoid listening to us when we say we want to launch a product using a new technology. We are currently working on the testing and documentation to get the Japanese FDA to upload our HPP juice, but it is very difficult and takes a long time. So here is not just a matter of educating the customers as we have uh, talked with Talei in Singapore, but also to convince the, the yeah the the regulations and so on to to accept yeah. the HP and so on and, and it's many benefits. Okay, let's go now with the with the second one. So uh, does Kaki Food offer tolling or packing services for third parties for other companies? Uh, with your machine offer yes. the HPP service yes. uh, to, to other companies that want to use the, the technology? Yes, we do. Our company receives several customers every month inquiring about HPP, some of which do not require FDA certification. We are the only food company in Japan that offers storing services and Kyoto in the middle of Japan, so it's very convenient to deal with customers all over in Japan. Uh, yeah, I think tolling services is a really good option for small brands or companies uh, trying to start with HPP. And yeah, in fact, it's the case of Talley as well in Singapore. They are using a third party machine. And yeah, it's a good option to, to start with the, the technology. All right. All right. So, so thank you so much, Miho. And now, which is Natalie Lowe from the Bestiary Pet Care. Hello, Natalie. Hello, such a great so, honor to be well, here. So, well, the Bestiary Pet Care is yes, uh, a introduction. Yeah. 
Same here. Great to have you here, Natalie. So, well, the Bestiary Pet Care is the official distributor of Steve's Real Food, which is a US-based pet food brand, but with some presence in Asia, as is uh, Singapore and South Korea. So, yeah, Natalie, uh, I will show your presentation. Okay, you so thank you, Oscar. With you. Okay, so Seize Your Food basically is a US-based raw, uh, raw pet food brand. Uh, before we start, let's, let's uh, do a short introduction. So, okay, my name is Natalie and uh, I'm a distributor uh, for premium pet food and supplies in Singapore. And we are actually the exclusive distributor for Seize Your Food. So, Steve's Real Food is actually the oldest raw pet food company in the US, being a pioneer in the raw pet food industry starting in 1998. So, Steve's Real Food focused on educational based sales to create a demand for raw pet food. And uh, Steve's actually still remains one of the leaders in the pet food industry, now being a multinational brand distributing both frozen and uh, freeze dried raw foods. So, um, Seas Real Food start, started uh, free stride distribution of our complete and balanced diets and supplements in Hong Kong and China in 2018, uh, South Korea in 2019, and also now in Singapore 2021. So, Seas Real Food has been in the market, uh, the Singapore market for about a year. Okay, so on average, the population of the surveyed 12 uh, Southeast Asian market dogs has shown to be the highest ownership rate at 32%, followed by cats at 26% and fish at 15%. It is also expected that the percentage could grow by 50% by the, by the year of 2026. And we are also seeing a new generation of pet ownership happening. So these people who are, who are choosing not to have families or delaying parenthood, um, you know, their pets, they have pets uh, as a family and actually truly believe that a healthy diet, a healthy diet is non-negotiable over and over 70% of pet owners see their pets as family and desires a healthy diet uh, that their pet can get excited for. Um, of course, you know, with great, uh, with great advantages also comes with disadvantages, right? So Steve's Real Food also face challenge, uh, you know, being uh, being a raw pet food that is not cooked. So, you know, the production of raw pet food is pretty simple. You just grind and mix the ingredients, form them into the shape that you want. It could be a patty, it could be a nugget, and then you just flash freeze them. So there is no heat at any time. And since Steve's Real Food is also a U.S. certified uh, human, you, they use U.S. certified uh, human grade meat, which by nature have bacteria, right? So in fact, also about 29% of the chicken that you purchase at the store or market will have bacteria in its raw form. And also in and also there is a case study done by the CDC, which found that in the US, 29% of store-bought chicken has bad bacteria. So you, 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 you take a piece of chicken home from the market and you cook it without killing all the bacteria, the bad and the good bacteria. So probiotics, enzyme, minerals are all cooked away with the heat as well, leaving an unnatural depleted piece of meat. So here's the challenge, you know, how do we, how do we preserve the good bacteria, also known as probiotics, and keep the highest level of minerals and enzymes present for our pets? So we know that our pets have a different digestive system than we do. Uh, their digestive tract is different and they have a higher pH in their gut to naturally help them digest the bad bacteria in most cases. But we also need to make sure that 100, uh, we also need to have 100% certainty that our pet is, our pet food is also 100% safe for all dogs and cats without compromising the good bacteria and those minerals and enzymes. Which is why Steve's Real Food started looking at options to keep the food as a whole living, uh, whole living food complete uh, with minerals and enzyme in their natural form and make a safe palatable product that could meet FDA's no tolerance regulation as well as meet standards for import and export requirements. So Steve's Real Food tried a different method of deactivating the bacteria, but all methods tried resulted in either few pathogen strains removed or good bacteria destroyed, a product that wasn't palatable or nutritionally depletion so, and so many roadblocks. 
And uh, finally, you know, there was a high pressure technology. So hyperbaric actually provided sneeze your food with the data showing us that 99.99% deactivation of pathogen. But there was, there was still the question of the nutritional equivalence with high pressure processing. So Steve started numerous testing of HPP pro product against a non-HPP product. And we are very happy to find that there was only a slight changes to the nutrition, which, were, which we were able to naturally change within our recipe formulation. So Steve's actually adopted HPP in January 2020 on all of its meat-based products. So, and we are very happy to report that we have made many pet parents very happy with the product they can trust and it's safe and naturally full of minerals and enzyme needed to, to, uh, to lead their, their pets thrive. HPP has also allowed us to open in more international market that require product testing before imports, for example, in Singapore, because Singapore is very strict on your imports of pet food. And uh, also, we are also breaking the glass ceiling that the raw pet food industry is safe, is faced when, when it comes to getting veterinary support. High pressure uh, technology has also kept a raw, raw food diet in its natural, safe, and a whole living, whole living food for dogs and cats. So in this next slide, I have a video to share with you guys. Dogs and cats love Steve's Real Food because it is straight from what they would naturally eat. If you were handed a steak or a, a bowl of cereal, you would probably want the steak also. <laughs> because not only do my pets jump up and down when I open my freezer, but I'm able to see the vitality that comes from it. Steve's Real Food uses HPP because we want to achieve a five log reduction. It is the only method that allows us to do so without compromising taste and nutritional value. HPP is a craft more than a science, and you have to get it right. And if you do it right, you can achieve a five log reduction without compromising it nutritionally. Yeah, so uh, I hope everyone do enjoy the the, the video. It was uh, really amazing that Nico and Chantel did able to you know shoot the video and actually show you guys how HPP really benefits these your food. So these are the line of uh, products that Seize Your Food actually offers. So. Um, Seize Your Food has the original freeze dried range, which is on your left, which offers uh, six different proteins, as well as the newest line on the on your right, which is the Quest freeze dried uh, cat food tray model, available in four different proteins. Yes, and uh, that's that's it for the Seize Your Food presentation. I hope you really do enjoy, um, you know, the slides and just sharing of information. Okay, thank you so much, Natalie. Love for for presenting this real food story, and especially with uh, its present in, in Singapore in particular. So now, yeah, I will ask you a couple of questions as well, as I've done with the rest of the speaker. To describe the research season food. So okay, so. Yeah, so actually, Steve's Your Food conducted an internal testing of about 95 nutrition, nutrients and also saw an insignificant change to the nutrient value. Uh, this combined with uh, extensive research done by third-party laboratories led Steve's Your Food to the conclusion that actually HPP raw diet and non-HPP raw diet are bioequivalent. So uh, Steve's Your Food conducted several tests on HPP raw, raw meat diets and non-HPP raw meat diet to determine the effects of the process on protein, fats, minerals, vitamins, enzymes, probiotics, and toxins. So the objective of this test were actually first to determine the effects of high pressure processing on raw meat diets. And secondly, to identify any negative side effect that the process might, uh, that the process might produce. 
and it, the result provides a clear picture. So there was only four nutrients that had a slight loss of about 20%. And these four nutrients were in such abundance that it required very little change in our, uh, in our diet formulation. But of course, the primary, the primary concern when pressurizing food in plastic bags is the migration of toxins from the packaging to the food. So the packaging that sees real food use during the HPP process is certified BPA free. However, we also want to be certain that there were no toxins being leached. And all tests found no change to BHA and toxin free. So these tests, along with the previous scientific evidence on the effectiveness of inactivating pathogenic bacteria while still preserving the good bacteria, also known as probiotics, lets this real food to a fact-based conclusion that the processing does not have harmful nutrient, nutritional effect. And HPP seems to be a desirable technology for the safe treatment of raw pet foods and fastly becoming a global choice for pet, pet parents. Yeah, great explanation of all the previous work before launching the product. Total question for Singapore: How important is it to pet owners in Singapore? Pet food is safe, but it's still fresh food. Okay, like I mentioned before, that uh, because of the change in your modern world, that everybody you know start to delay parenthood or you know they do not want to have kids especially in asia because um of the pressure the stress and everything to even have a child so uh many many owners actually start to get pets instead uh and you know they the care for the care for pets uh in this modern day is just increasing a lot more higher so people are willing to pay more uh for a very good high quality product that they know that is still safe and fresh so it is incredibly important for pet owners in Singapore, especially. Okay, great to have that, that input from the local vision as well. Well, just to say that pet food is actually one of the most growing applications in in the US, for example. It's true that the FDA requires the clean food feed for HP, but also the yeah, consumer demand of this kind of you know best food for, for their pets but while also being safe for its manipulation it's a key factor of, of the success of obviously for so thank you so much yes. Nati and I would like uh, to say yes. you also Talei and Miho for being with us today and now it's time for Jorge Marraud, which is Hyperbaric Asia Director. He's based in Singapore. Hello, Jorge. Hello, Oscar. Hello, everyone. Hi, Jorge. So he will explain a little bit uh, the principles of the technology, and he will give a little bit overview of the market trends and market uh, situation in that region in Asia. So, Jorge, all yours. You can start presenting your, your slides. Thank you very much, Oscar. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Oscar introduced me, I'm Jorge Mago. I'm the director for Asia at Hyperbaric. I manage every project between India and Japan, uh, including, of course, all main markets, which we will see in the next slides. Uh, and of course, I had the pleasure of working with Natalie, Talei, and Miho in their projects. Well, not with Natalie since, uh, since, uh, their their projects originally is from the US, so it was uh, they were in contact with our colleagues in the office there. So I would like to give you a, a short and comprehensive overview of the HPP technology and or technology itself, the equipment we manufacture, as well as the situation in Asia and examples of HPP products for you can get inspired for your own product so you can see what other uh, players in the game are doing. So first of all, I would like to introduce Hyperbaric. Uh, we are the HPP world leading company in terms of both size of the market and uh, quality of the solution provided. Um, we have over 360 systems all around the world. We're present in all continents. 
sorry, my slides are moving slower. As I was saying, we have over 300, well, 60, 50 is a bit outdated, 360 systems worldwide, which represent a market share over 65%. Uh, we have achieved this leadership through uh, focus, totally focused experience onto the HPP. Also, it's true that this year, last two years, we've innovated also into hydrogen compression and cold isostatic presses for uh, ceramic and additive materials. And our focus for 20 years has been the HVP, and we have dedicated about 10% uh, of our revenue every year into our and solutions to develop the most advanced solutions in HPP at a level of pumps, yokes, uh, vessel, and uh, many other things as the CJ tubes that are uh, changing the game into the HVP sector. But our turnover is consistently over 50 million. Uh, some years uh, it consists mainly of smaller machines, other years it's bigger machines. It all depends as a customer grows. We support them in this growth and sometimes uh, then start with a small machine and then change to a bigger one. We have over 130 employees, which are uh, mainly in our headquarters in Burgos, Spain, which is our headquarters and factory. Uh, we also have a pilot plant there. And our office, second largest office, will be in Miami, the U.S., to cover uh, the American, both North and South American markets. We also have a, pli a pilot plant there and a warehouse to deliver spare parts. We also have a, another office in Mexico, as we have a big, big demand in the avocado sector. Thus, uh, this office has been growing steadily for the last three to four years. And as now more than, I believe, almost 10 colleagues or something like that, not not sure right now then we have another sales office in singapore where i am based and a after sales office in oceania for hpp so this technology that we all know about uh, but this name hpp stands for high pressure processing uh, is a non-thermal technology to extend the shelf life of products without the downside of heat pasteurization which is changing the product and HPP has been a game changer in the in many industries, mainly the beverage industries. You might know it for the juices, but basically, what is HPP? It's a non-thermal technology, so no heat involved. What we use is pressure, but how much pressure? So, for you can have an idea, if we dive it into the sea to the deepest point of the ocean, which will be the Marianas Trench, which you might have seen in many terror movies because we don't know what's what's there, uh, and if there's something below then that will be 1,000 bar. So we're going six times over that pressure um, to kill bacteria. So that tremendous amount of pressure disrupt the metabolism of bacteria at many different levels and induces a, a, a lethal damage to bacteria. It's important to note it's a pasteurization technology, not a sterilization technology. Thus, the products will require uh, cold storage after processing. If we can have an idea, as I say, it's a pasteurization. We can play with uh, the pressure depending on what we require. To be honest, most of customers work between 5,000 and 6,000 bar, which is the maximum uh, pressures the machine can work at. And that's because we aim at killing, at killing viruses and bacteria. But these pressures allow us also to kill yeast and molds, parasites, or even uh, small animals, uh, but our main concern in food industry is going to be always the, the bacteria and sometimes can be the viruses and then yeast and molds sometimes are an issue, but uh, to be honest, since they are controlled at pressures between 2,000 and 4,000 bars, uh, the going to five to 6,000 bar is the best way to ensure the safety and the shelf life extension of the products to maximize the results. But sometimes, for example, let's say an acidic juice, like an orange juice, the pH is going to help to prevent bacteria growth after HPP and it's going to improve the results of HPP. So we might not need to go to uh, 5,000 bar to achieve good results. However, the shelf life will be shorter than if we went to 5,000 bars. The second parameter besides pressure that we need to consider when we want to, to know if HPP is uh, pliable to a product or not, 
with the water activity. Water activity for HPP products must be over uh, 090. Normally, uh, all the most products are over 090 uh, in terms of activity water won't be uh, the case for products like jams, powders, concentrated or syrups. Uh, some dried meats like prosciutto can be very, very dry or beef gurky. In that case, HPP won't be a solution because to, uh, the pressure won't be transmitted into the product into the product effectively and thus we won't be killing uh, bacteria. But have sausages, juices, uh, guacamole, baby food, as we saw, uh, ready to eat meals in, the, in these products, the water activity is uh, well above 09, so you will achieve uh, 0.9, sorry, you will achieve uh, very good results in terms of shelf of extension. How much will depend also on the combination of pressure and holding time, ingredients, and so on. But why would I like to consider HPP instead of thermal pasteurization, which is well established as a lot of, of uh, I mean, it's well established in the sense that uh, organisms across the world know it well, the parameters are very well studied and that there are regulations for it. Well, HPP is more a novelty, even if it has been for more than 20 years around, and there might not be specific regulations for it. Well, basically, the main advantage of HPP besides the pasteurization one, which is to inactivate the uh, Listeria, Salmonella, E. coli, uh, wastage microorganisms, extend the shelf life, and thus guarantee the safety too, would be that since the product is in the final packaging and we're applying the pasteurization after packaging, there is no possibility of recontamination of the product. That allows also to take away preservatives and Combining to the fact that pressure doesn't affect the quality of the product, we don't need neither additives. So we can have a natural, clean level product, which can justify a higher uh, price on the market and also tends to have much higher acceptance by consumers nowadays. Well, know that consumers don't want complex chemical names or e codes in their labels, and they, that would be a driver of their decision. But you get that without compromising the shelf of extension, you will still get shelf life extended between threefold and up to 30 times the original shelf life without HPP. And the nutrients won't be affected. As I said, HPP is very mild compared to past thermal pasteurization. So even functional products remain functional. Another thing is how you can communicate that to the consumer. But we have customers in pharma that are using HPP to ensure the safety of enzyme extracts or, or bioactive compounds that they can then uh, add to their pharmacological products. So HPP is key if you want to deliver not only taste and quality in terms of, of, of the perception of the product, the color, the taste, the smell, but if you want to provide a nutritional quality to your consumers. It is true that in the US, the consumers are well educated about that in general, and they will know the benefits of HPP, while in other markets, there's still education to do ahead. As Talay said, they are doing a great, or customers are doing a great, uh, a great job at educating the consumers, and, and we support them through other ways, but still remains uh, work to do. So basically, we spoke about pressure, water activity, we should also consider the time, another parameter to consider. So the more time under pressure, uh, the greater the inactivation results are for bacteria, but it's a lesser or less important parameter compared to pressure. Pressure is much, much, much more important. So 6,000 bar is going to deliver better results uh, than 5,000 bar for the same time. Even if you increase the time under pressure at 5,000 bar, probably the results won't be as good as at 6,000 bar. Um, as an example, uh, durian, for example, durian uh, product, we are processing durian meat in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Singapore. Uh, this product is heavily contaminated, but the way to achieve the, the, the results required by Chinese authority for imports is not to extend uh, the, the time under pressure to 10 times as some consumers are doing, but the best way to achieve is 6,000 bar health for three minutes, two cycles. That will achieve much greater uh, bacteria killing effect than uh, increasing the time under pressure. 
This is something we learn with experience, but it's a, a rule of a thumb that you can apply for your product. However, most products will require uh, 6,000 bar health for three minutes. That will be enough to guarantee the shelf life and safety of 99.9% .9 of the product. Durian is just an exception. The pH is also very important. Uh, that's why SVP juices, because the juices tend to be from fruits that are acidic, thus the low pH prevents bacteria recovery and also enhances the killing effect of HPP. But of course, on products like ready to eat meals, it's, uh, as Miho explained, uh, it's not so easy to adjust the pH on these products, but uh, it can help. So really, when it comes to your product, we can give you a guideline or an estimated of shelf life, but the best way and we will encourage it is always to run some tests, which we can do in our headquarters in Spain, or headquarters in Miami, or office in Miami, sorry, or in Singapore, we can do it uh, with one of our customers who are very glad to help us and we are very grateful across these years. Internal shelf life extension, as I said, you're going to be between three and 30 times. 30 times is the case of juices, is where we achieve the best uh, shelf life extension. Ready to eat meals, we tend to be in the four, in the four times. Uh, yes, the shelf life, sorry, is uh, fourfold the original uh, shelf lives. That depends also on the packaging, on the way of manufacturing, etc. Uh, the soup spoon, for example, a customer here in Singapore has developed and worked a lot on the processes uh, upstream HPP to achieve a shelf life extension of five to six times. Uh, uh, so there is always uh, room for improvement, of course. Uh, four times is a conservative scenario. The same happens for cooked meats. And in the case of vegetable dips, such as hummus, guacamole, we achieved 10 times the shelf life that we originally had without any processing. All these shelf life are, are without preservatives. Of course, you add preservatives to extend the shelf life, but you will be losing the clean levels. But the packaging, uh, one might I think that to go to 6,000 uh, uh, science packaging, you don't need to go for that. 99% of the solutions, uh, of the shell solutions, I mean, the standard solution provided by packaging suppliers. In the case of three key, you need to control the amount of gas inside the packaging. So no MAP for HPP, you have to use vacuum or almost vacuum and especially have a flexible top film. In the case of pouches, then generally 99.9% .9 of the solutions work. Pouches are flexible bags. We just recommend PE AVOHP. I think we can see this in the next slide, the materials we recommend. Yeah, so uh, here we can see all, all the materials that we can use for HPP. Uh, of course, the most popular for bottles PAT, for pouches, is going to be uh, P nylon P or P VOHP. And for top and trace, well, PP and a top film of uh, P. Of course, any questions you might have, we are happy to help. I mean, you can reach out to us uh, to ask, even if you are using a tolling service, we are always glad to help. Well, the HPP systems, well, we offer the widest range of HPP systems. So we can go from the small five, which is a 50 on the, on the right side. It still provides 270 kg per hour throughput, which is pretty good for a small machine. But um, of course, it's limited in terms of expansion. The bigger systems like the 135 and above, uh, have a standard capacity uh, ranging up to 300, uh, sorry, 3,210 kg in the case of the biggest, the Equipe 5 to 5, and can be expanded by adding more pumps. That means we can also uh, install with less pumps and then uh, expand in the future with uh, more pumps. That's a way to contain the investment originally. And we also offer this integrate, integrated uh, version that you can see, which is putting the densifiers on top of the machine to reduce the footprint and reduce slightly the cost of maintenance, uh, which will help you to install the machine. And even if you choose to install with less intensifiers, then expand in the future, it will help you 
to expand without having to redesign the whole layout. About the market, I'm going to give you a vision of, of the market in, in general and then in Asia. So you see the growth is exponential. It's, that's because HPP is aligned with the demand of consumers for cleaner uh, and more tasty products, much, much more natural products. That's why HPP is becoming increasingly popular. But the markets, North America remains the biggest market, followed by Europe, that has uh, uh, very interesting growth in the last years. And Asia also has been growing strongly, uh, mainly in uh, in South Korea, China, and Japan, which are the largest market. But also, also we see a lot of growth in Southern Asia for fruit and vegetable products, mainly to constraints such as cold chain or population. Applications, the most popular application, well, it's not uh, 1,800, but uh, guacamole is a very big uh, application. But the biggest will be juices and beverages, followed by probably guacamole and dips, which is about uh, 21%, if I'm correct, not uh, 1,800. And meat products is uh, the third category in terms of, of size then tow tow is companies that buy the machine and then rent the capacity is the fourth category then much smaller categories are fish and seafood which is for extraction of meat from seafood uh, research and development ready to eat meals salsas pet food and instant food infant food sorry baby food uh, there are still small not so many pioneers like Tale in the sector that's because the, the the standard is retort products self-ambient it's a pity because i have kids and uh, they love talay products and they love hpp products but they hate the uh, sterile pouches because they don't taste of course uh, nothing closer to fresh food then as i say the juices is the biggest market you can see a lot of examples here nut meals uh, cold brew coffee cold brew teas uh, fruit bases, uh, fruit based waters, infused waters, sparkling waters, probiotics, juices, smoothies. Basically, you can do anything, anything your creativity takes you to. Then, uh, as I mentioned in the in the original slide, uh, avocado produce is a very very big market for us. That's why we have a team in Mexico. And uh, basically, you, you can do with avocado a lot of things, salsas, dips, uh, avocado in different formats, uh, salad dressings, and especially guacamole is the most popular. Uh, in Asia, I see a big, big opportunity for both Indonesia and Vietnam in that sector. They have very good avocados with uh, several seasons across the year. Uh, I see a big opportunity to be, uh, to, to, to be a market for HPP to export uh, guacamole to uh, surrounding countries. Basically, uh, if you've been to Vietnam, you've seen the size of avocados. They are huge, like coconuts. Uh, so it's difficult to sell them as a piece because it's a large quantity of avocado to eat at once, but uh, it's very good for making products. In terms of meat products, we main market is deli meats and dry cured. We also have ready to eat meals, of course, but uh, we see a growth in raw marinated products for B2C, but mainly B2B. So it's very convenient to have the, the, the meat uh, that it lasts for more than one month ready to be used anytime at the restaurant. Uh, if you have an idea, ready to, uh, ready to cook, so raw marinated meat through HPP tends to last about 41 days, which is huge for a restaurant because otherwise with a very good packaging and clean process, you get tops 21 days. Then pet food uh, that we saw with the example of uh, Steve's Real Food is an emerging market. There are still not so many players amongst them. Uh, Steve is a very important player that has spent a lot of time, as Natalie explained, on researching and explaining why did they choose to use SPP for the raw products and why it doesn't affect their mission, their values and their proposal. Uh, there are many other players. It's true that most of them are in the US, but now we start to see more demand in Europe and Asia, but still um, the only player in Asia that I know of is uh, Steve's. Okay. 
Then South has and uh, plant-based products. There's a huge demand for it for these products, growing, growing demand. Uh, so basically, hummus, any other dips, salsas, which would be more like chopped tomato with uh, with uh, peppers or onions. Also, ready to eat like cold soups or mush. That is um, overnight oats uh, are products that we see an increase in demand for that. Of course, plant-based meals been around for a few years now. Uh, HPP again provides better taste compared to pasteurization. Then in seafood, as I mentioned, it's mostly for the extraction that you can see, you can retrieve the claws and the body of the lobster, so crabs perfectly. You can extract the meat from mollusks uh, with only a one minute processing or less. So it speeds up and lowers the manpower cost of operation. Also, we have customers processing ready to cook uh, fishes, like you can see in the trays. Octopus, uh, it improves the texture and the quality. And also, I'll guide this product is from South Korea, it's a, a salad of Al Gai. And we also have other, other examples of salads, ready to eat meals, or even in crabs, HPP has been used uh, to kill um, parasites and viruses present in crabs and ensure the safety of the product. course we're forgetting or we were leaving out baby food but it's important to mention baby food as I said uh, I'm a I'm a consumer of these products I'm a consumer of Thales products uh, HPP allows to bring all the benefits of fresh food to our babies without compromising the safety that's some, some something that is complex with fresh fruit and especially we give them the nutrition that is destroyed by thermal processing otherwise. So sometimes, uh, I can't remember if it was uh, one Supona farm or what, one of our customers in the USA, how it, how it comes that you are giving to your baby a product that is probably older than your baby. And it's true, it's a mind-blowing uh, claim or, or phrase, but it's true. Uh, how, can we, how can we give... give such a look to our infants when they are in a critical moment of development and they need the most nutritious foods we can provide them. Then ready to eat meals is a market that is growing. It's growing both in formats uh, for one consumption, as you can see at home, and also in B2B formats, so larger formats uh, for restaurants that centralize operations and they have one kitchen equipped with an SPP machine and they supply it to all the restaurants for reheating and serving. That's because SPP maintains the quality of the fresh product, so allows to do this kind of operations without compromising the results. About HPP in Asia itself, as I mentioned, the largest market uh, for us, uh, one of them is Japan, which was the earliest adopter of HPP, and the Far East Asia is the main market. I'm speaking uh, Korea, China, and Japan. China is the fastest growing market uh, right now. They have a huge population and there's been a, a big shift in terms of food consumption from, uh, let's say, cheaper uh, foods to higher quality foods. Uh, I think they're doing uh, the, the change of tendencies is to look for healthier foods. And in that sense, HPP is heavily benefited by this trend because it allows to provide this quality to the end users or end consumers, sorry. Sorry, my slides are going slower than I wish. So in, in Asia, the largest application by far is juices and beverages. I'm including here coconut water in Thailand, for example. Then will be followed by ready to eat meals, seafood, and salsas and plant-based. Of course, we have a few companies offering tolling services here. Um, that's a good way for startups to begin uh, into the HPP and especially testing the market so they can um, they can grow and then in the future adopt their own machine. Well, HPP in Asia, as I said, mostly beverages. Hyperbaric is by far the largest player in the region. We have almost 80% market share. Um, Again, the, the, the main, the core is the quality of our solutions, especially of 
for, for after sales days at 24 7. You can call anytime, you will get support. It's not something you get with other players. This is an example of HPP products in Asia. Some of them we've seen them already, like the ready to eat meals uh, that we can see here. We also have some uh, Vita Plus, uh, this product is being sold in Japan, which is top fruit with liquid. Rejuve from Indonesia, selling their functional juices, second nature in India, Pulmon in Korea, uh, Juice in Malaysia, uh, this seaweed salad from Korea, and uh, an example of durian paste, although it's true, or consumers or customers in durian, uh, they don't sell into the market, but they export all the durian to China, uh, which is a marketplace. Based, uh, better prices for the kg. Sector opportunities we see in, in Asia, ready to eat meals, as I said, large restaurant chains can benefit from centralizing operations. HPP will allow them to extend the shelf life and especially will uh, uh, maintain the quality. That way, uh, companies can, can lower a lot the cost, lower a lot the losses and expand their surface of tables per restaurant since they don't need large uh, chambers to store the product, uh, raw materials to cook them, have the staff cooking them, etc. Sugarcane juice has a big demand across Southern Asia in general and is a product that doesn't respond well to thermal pasteurization. So HPP brings uh, the benefits of pasteurization without compromising the quality of the product. Cold tea also has a huge demand and also for uh, like boba and other kind of teas. Uh, durian paste, of course, the demand is huge and never stops growing. HPP is the only technology that allows to extend the shelf life without compromising the quality. I think there's a huge opportunity for Vietnamese, Thai, uh, especially Malaysian companies to export to China and use HPP to make sure that their bacterial counts and the product is safe and the bacterial counts are low so they can export China uh, without uh, concerns. And of course, uh, lime juice is another product that has a huge demand. If you process it by heat, it becomes quite bitter. So HPP uh, delivers the quality required. And milk is a product that still has a lot of constraints, such as regulation, uh, regu regulations that ask for thermal processing, but the benefits of consuming raw milk are pretty clear by now. The only thing is that the risk of consuming raw milk is still very high. We've seen that HPP doesn't take away the benefits, but improves the safety. Um, so, so there is a huge interest for that, and I think a huge opportunity for the future. That will be all on my side. Uh, I just would like to thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and uh, everybody watching. And of course, I would like to thank uh, Natalie, Miho, and Tale for being uh, with us today. Thank you very much for showing us what you do and explaining uh, the projects which you've been working so passionately for the last years. And I would like to thank Oscar, of course, uh, for taking care of the presentation and preparing everything. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Jorge. Just to extend the, your words to, to the speakers and the rest of the audience and see you in the next webinar and next content of Fibromatic, talking about high pressure for healing. Bye, everyone.